Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we start, well, near Saturn, but we are going to go and look at a pair of new exoplanets which have been discovered, well, practically in the solar system's backyard. Most of the stars that we see in our sky have been known for centuries or millennia. They have names like Tau Ceti, Alpha Centauri, Epsilon Eridani, Sirius, and uh, those are all easily seen because they are visible to the human eye, but obviously there are many, many nearby stars which are just simply simply too faint to be seen. One of those examples is Tea Garden Star, which was only discovered in 2003. And of course, we can go there. Now, it's named for Bonner Tea Garden, who was working, I believe, at the Goddard Space Flight Center, and kind of as a side project, decided to use data from the near Earth asteroid tracking surveys to look for stars with high proper motion. Proper motion is the motion of the star across the sky just due to, you know, its motion through the galaxy. Uh, if you look at stars for long enough, they appear to move very, very, very slowly, but they, their differences are important. And the ones that are have the higher proper motion tend to be the ones close by. So they found this object and it was very, very faint. It had a mass of about 0 0.9, 0 0.8 solar masses. It's a red dwarf. And its luminosity is about 100,000 times less than that of the sun, which is why it was so hard to see. Initially, it would cause quite a stir because it was thought to be about seven and a half light years away because the parallax wasn't well determined. Later on, the parallax was observed with more, greater accuracy and they figured out that it was about 12 light years away. So a team has discovered evidence that there is a pair of planets orbiting Tea Garden Star. They did this by looking at spectral lines in the infrared and looking at the Doppler shift to measure radial velocity variations. But what's more interesting is these two objects are pretty much smack bang in the middle of the habitable zone and based on their size they should be roughly comparable to Earth or Venus size worlds. That doesn't mean that we know they have atmospheres or that they're not being irradiated by flares or anything like that, but they are roughly the right size and the right place to make themselves very, very interesting. And the great thing is thanks to Space Engine, I can just imagine that the synthetic version created by the game engine is somewhat representative of what this world might look like. So here we are standing on Tea Garden B, looking at the sky above us, and obviously we wouldn't see these stars. I mean, Tea Garden star may be 100,000 times dimmer, but <laughs> you wouldn't be able to see stars in the sky here. So based on the amount of radial velocity change, you can estimate the mass of these, and the mass puts them around just over one Earth mass. There's a lot of assumptions there based upon the angle of the orbit to our viewer, but you know one Earth mass is pretty good. They're at roughly the right distance. The first one it has a period of 4.9 days. The second one has a period of about 11.5 days. And because they're so close, they're very likely tidally locked. So this puts it again, as a potential nearby world that could support human-style life and ecosystems. Of course, almost certainly it doesn't, right? Because you never know what kind of thing you might find on a planet. Take Venus. Venus is roughly the right size, and it has clouds, and people thought that there used to be dinosaurs and stuff on it, right? But uh, it's very, very much not hospitable to life. Anyway, another interesting thing about Tea Garden Star is that it lies very close to the ecliptic. The ecliptic is the plane of the solar system where all the um, all the planets orbit. So that means that from Tea Garden Star, if you looked back at the sun, you would see it as a star in the sky. It would be a relatively bright star, but you would also see that periodically it would dim because of planets passing in front of it. So while we don't see Tea Garden B and C transiting Tea Garden Star, they would be able to see the Earth, the Moon, Jupiter, Saturn passing in front of the Sun if they were looking. So, I mean, this obviously brings up an interesting question of, you know, how, since there are many stars that we are seeing with planets around them due to transits, there are many stars which can see the planets orbiting around the sun by the same definition. These aren't planets, these are sunspots that are being generated by the, the game engine simulating things. We can bring up the solar system here and get an idea of the plane of the ecliptic. See that? Obviously they've put in some of the larger bodies out there. If we zoom out at some point we can also see Tea Garden's star. 
Uh, and we'd have to zo uh, zoom out about this far, and I think we can actually select it. Aha! Uh -huh. uh, there it is right there, see that? It's too dark to actually show up because it is so incredibly faint, but it's not the only incredibly faint star nearby. There are many brown dwarfs have been discovered since then. I think the most interesting one recently is Lumen 16, which is also named for somebody called Lumen. It was discovered by the WISE, the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, and it's a binary. There's two of these objects that are, there's an L class and a T class brown dwarf, and they're about six and a half light years from Earth. Let's see if we can find them here. Uh, F3... Lumen 16, there we go. Okay, so that's much, much closer to the Earth. Now, obviously, we don't know if these have exoplanets. I'm just highlighting this thing here. Let's go to it just to get a look at what a pair of brown dwarfs look like in Space Engine. Obviously, if you played Elite Dangerous, you know exactly what brown dwarfs look like, and you typically swear when you see them because you can't refuel off them in that game. So... Traveling across space takes a long time, but thankfully we are doing it in a game which is a whole like, lot faster, thanks to our godlike powers. And we're all we're actually there already. There we go. One and the other. They're orbiting around their common barycenter here. So they don't have any planets around these because at this time there are no known objects around here. So yeah, Tea Garden Star is interesting because it was discovered so recently. It was discovered using data that had come from another source and on, I think the people involved none of them were really professional astronomers so it's a great example of what smart people can do when they take resources and reuse them to you know to do their own thing to uh, solve their own problems and there's huge amounts of unused data out there that could be reused for other things so on one hand you can't be an amateur astronomer with a tiny telescope anymore, but you can be an amateur astronomer using the copious quantities of data that have been discovered and catalogued and uh, made available by other parties. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.